My next guest is Bala Ganesh, Vice President of Corporate Engineering at UPS. We all know UPS, where, but you, this is a different kind of UPS we're going to hear about in just a moment, where he leads drone delivery efforts and other technological exploration, including autonomous transportation, robots in UPS warehouses, and more. Bala, it's great to uh, talk to you. Look, a friend of mine at UPS in your Washington office years ago gave me a kind of scaled down model of the UPS delivery truck. It's really cool. It's on my shelf in my office. Office of Brown. Do I get a brown drone, a UPS drone? Uh, oh, you know, what's the color coding of your drones? <laughs> it's the same old classic color. So yeah, just give us the address. We'll ship one to you. Well, I mean, why don't you tell us a little bit about? I mean, I think a lot of people may not know that you are kind of jumping into the future, uh, particularly working with CVS, um, trying to figure out how to kind of change delivery patterns and delivery possibilities for people. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so when we think about the future, right? So we're thinking about a variety of modes or a variety of ways to get things to people, right? That's what we are here for—to move things and 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 get it to you at the right time at the right place. So we think about a variety of ways to get it to you, and one way is going to be uh, drones in the future, and that's going to fit into a certain um, set of uh, requirements that customers may have. So, for example, if we have to move critical medicines between two hospital systems, right? That is really urgent and it's a life-saving thing. Uh, this would be a great fit. Uh, if you wanted a, a prescription that you needed delivered today and you couldn't leave your home, this would be a fit. So we've got to think about the right problem and put the right technology to address it. That is fascinating. You know, I'm just sort of mesmerized by some of the video that we're just seeing of these delivery vehicles uh, going on right now. I, I'm, you know, as you're doing it, I mean, when, when you sort of look at broad based um, deployment of this, what, is, what are the impediments to spreading these opportunities right now? I mean, I know you're testing it, trying to kind of get everybody acclimated to it. But but as you kind of look to coming to my city, Washington, D.C., which is, you know, sometimes a great city, sometimes a screwed up city. How, what are the impediments for you coming here? Yeah, so um, I'll talk about, so before we get into the impediments, right, wh what I wanted to say, the context of how we think about uh, this technology as a whole, right? So there is one piece which we talked about. So we think about it from three angles. One is urgent point-to-point -point movements mm -hmm. in, for example, like the hospital campuses movements, et cetera, I talked about, right? maybe uh, drugs that are required for cancer patients, something like that, for surgeries. There's a second, which is urban final mile business to consumers. So the CVS example you talked about. And then there's a third piece, which is our middle mile, which we are starting to think about from electrical vertic well, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for moving heavier loads uh, that could be uh, feeding into our final mile network. So. Those are the kind of the three areas we are talking about uh, as we as we move forward in this technology. Now, um, there's two pieces to it that we need to kind of overcome. Uh, and then there's a meta piece on top of it. The first one is the technology. The second is the regulations. And the third is the cost and the, and the return investment of whether this can be actually applied in a business sense. And uh, from a technology perspective, there's basically three things that's going to be very important for us to make this commercial. Number one is it can one uh, operator who is uh, monitoring these uh, drones or whatever you want to call it, uh, UAVs, uh, unmanned air vehicles, can they monitor multiple at the same time? That's when the cost becomes effective. Second, which means that the, uh, these vehicles, these aerial vehicles, should be able to detect and avoid other uh, vehicles, birds, et cetera, in the air, obstacles in the air. So that's number two. And then number three is that how does it interface with all the other a uh, aerial uh, systems and, and technologies in the, in, the, uh, in the system today and make sure the communication, et cetera, works really well. So those are the three pieces from a technology side. From a regulatory side, we have to clarify the rules, and we work every day with the federal uh, FAA in, in this process, is how do we start defining as we learn and these testing, which we are contributing data every day to the FAA, what those rules need to be. And it needs to be at a certain level that doesn't make it cost prohibitive to commercial applications. Again, going back to my meta mm. uh, question I talked about. 
So putting the technology regulations together then brings us to our cost versus uh, revenue, willingness to pay for those customers for those use cases, and that's where the sweet spot of where the application is going to be. Do you, I mean, let me ask you, you know, just a blunt question, is the FTA, FAA up to the job? You know, later we've got Scott Kirby of United Airlines who's going to be joining us, and you know, whether it's United or the CEO of Delta, CEO of American Airlines, I've talked with them in the past, and you know, one of the things that they raised is that you know, we need to really change air traffic control. We need to modernize it. The systems and standards they have in place are not aligned with the rate and, and opportunities and innovation today. So what is your, and as you kind of describe the matrix and overlay of dairy, various things they need, and the first question I have, you know, does an FAA bureaucrat, for whom I have great respect, does that FAA bureaucrat in the systems, are they up to the challenge right now? Yeah, so this is not an easy problem, right? So think about right. it, right? It, it, we, the systems that we have today have been built over the last 70, 80 years. Remember, we've, uh, we started flying uh, a long time ago, and before we put all the regulations, et cetera, in place that makes it today where we can get in an airplane without any concern about safety. Hmm. Now, when you get into uh, this new era we're getting into, there is going to be some storming and norming as we start uh, jockeying into place at what that final system looks like. So uh, I definitely feel like this is going to be a journey where uh, all these different constraints have to play together uh, so that we can finally decide what is that optimal system that can enable not only this new technology, but do it in a commercially viable manner. Uh, you know, we, one of the other things we've been weaving into these conversations, Bala, is, is uh, sustainability, resilience. Um, mm -hmm looking at climate, um, not only climate goals, but changing weather. How, you know, as you sort of look at the future infrastructure of UPS, how are those elements being built in? Because, you know, do you, do you have a commitment on uh, emissions goals? Do you have, you know, a broader sensitivity you're trying to build throughout the firm, you know, as we deal with delivery and transportation on how to reduce carbon footprint? Absolutely, that is one of the key areas of focus for UPS. So. You know, I would urge all your uh, watchers and listeners to just search for UPS and sustainability and you'll find our uh, sustainability report that's published online. And we definitely have commitments that we're working towards. Um, the key thing that you have to remember is that um, we have a very close incentive alignment between what we want to do and sustainability because we want to be as efficient as possible when we move those goods to you at the right time at the right place. And so there is a huge alignment between what we are trying to get done and what the sustainability goals are, which is how do you get this in the most efficient way? So because the one thing I always say is that the most efficient or the most sustainable mile is the mile I don't drive, right? So the thing is, the more, the more efficient we can make it, the more um, uh, optimal we can make it, the better it's going to be in the long run. So as, we, uh, as you teed up in your opening comments, there is basically... Um, Four things that we do that make sure that we are uh, keeping in line. Number one, of course, is optimizing and making our system more efficient so we are not unnecessarily putting any kind of miles on the road. Number two is all the ground systems that we've talked about, both in our um, line hall and in the final mile. And then uh, we've talked a little bit about the new mode as far as uh, aerial aviation, also electrical vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that you've talked about. And then last but not least, we are talking about making sure that this is sustainable in the long run, uh, which means that it is commercially viable. You know, I, I know we're out of time, but I just saw a staggering statistic here about you folks. It says you have 127,000 cars, vans, and stuff that moves. How many drones are you going to have, say, in the next five years? <laughs> Well, I, I think it's, uh, I wish I had a crystal ball, but I'm hoping that we'll have uh, a, a large number over time. But uh, as I said, it's a journey, right? It's going to be a, a combination of things working together, these technologies, to deliver what matters to the people, right? So that's, uh, that's basically UPS's uh, purpose, which is we want to move our world forward by delivering what matters. And we put together these technologies to make sure we can deliver innovation to deliver what that matters to the world. Really, really fascinating. Do you have a do you have a favorite city that you want to work on in this, or do you love all the cities? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I love all the cities, but historically, what we've been working on, um, just because of the integration pilot program that we started with the FAA or we worked on with the FAA, is uh, we've done a lot of our preliminary work in North Carolina. So that's where we've mm. kind of grown up in. Uh, but uh, over time, we plan hoping to expand uh, thereafter from there. Are you working with Charlotte? 
Uh, we're doing a lot of work in Raleigh. I see, in Raleigh. Well, we had the mayor of Charlotte on earlier via Lyle. She said she's interested in all of the above, so give her a call. I think she'd be up for it. In any case, Bala Ganesh, uh, Vice President of Corporate Engineering at UPS, thanks so much for sharing with us what the future, at least of getting our drug prescriptions, is going to look like, but I hope a lot more stuff as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.